Okay, we're, we're talking here about the vocabulary in Unit 14. Um, this is on pages 404 and 405 in the book. Um, the, let's talk about the verbs first. The first verb is deknube, this verb that's athematic only in its imperfective aspect system, and it has no vowel alternation in that system. So it's dekdeme, and then the principal parts are really regular. Dekdeme, dekso, edeksa, dede, ha, you have an aspirated perfect, dede, gmai, and the dekthane, and uh, means to, sh to show or point. And then they give you um, a compound, epi dekdeme, which means to show off or display and becomes a word associated with rhetorical uh, things. That's why you have the noun epidexis, epidexeos, hey which they also give you means a display or a demonstration or means a rhetorical display. Mm. Um, um, you also mm. get this the verb ep an histamai, okay? So it's a preverb, the pre it's, a, it's a verb um, composed of the intransitive form of histamai, the middle form, with two preverbs, epi and ana. Epi ana histamai comes out ep an histamai, and it means to rise in revolt against someone who goes in the native, okay? <laughs> these are, you can see how basic these words are, and you're going to see another example of it. The word, the word histame has very important connotations for civic, uh, to, in, in civic and political uh, things. Mm -hmm. So we saw up histame, which makes someone else revolt, okay? Right. This middle only verb means to rise in revolt against something. Or someone. So, you know, Greek city states are in conflict a lot. They're trying to take over from each other. They have a highly developed vocabulary having to do with, and th th that's based on these very old words, especially his name. So, and it's a word that has uh, important connotations for his name for, for political well being. So, so the, the most beautiful example of this is how do you say set up a chorus in a Greek city state? Did we talk about this? Or not? I don't think so. I don't think so, but the, 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 the verb is histeme, you histeme a chros. A chros is a fundamental, it's a choral, it's a chorus of people, a group of people who sing and dance mm -hmm. uh, together, but it's like the, it's like a glee club, okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, it's a fundamentally social, a fundamental social unit mm -hmm. of, co of, co of a cohesive group, and usually they're gender specific in ancient Greece, although they're, they can be, they can be mixed. Um, but you know that this is the, the the kind of environment in which young Greek, young ancient Greeks, male and female, learned how to be how to behave, uh, to be socialized in effect. So th th that's where the name of the, there's a great poet of whom we have only fragments named Stacey Choros, oh, he who yeah. sets up a chorus. <laughs> Good name for a poet, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so so there's epanistamai. There's the verb erotao, which means to ask. Uh, ask a question or question someone, and it's just an alpha contract verb, nothing special. It's a verb derived from the noun erotes, which means a person who asks questions. So erotes is a questioner, and erotao means to ask a question. Um, we got the verb lanthano. We talked about that. The principal parts are interesting. Lanthano, leso, elathon is like manthano, math, uh, lambano, lab. And then you have the perfect form, leletha. The root is leth or lath, okay? And so you see this is related to the river in the underworld, the river lethe, which is a river of forgetfulness. Uh, you can see that we're talking in the same context of, of uh, erasing memory is the same as escaping notice, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and actually this verb in the middle means forget. Okay, and right. covers an object in the gender. We haven't Don't given think. that, been given that, but that's what happens. Under the preverb para, which means beside, as you know, um, it means it with a dative sitting beside or at the side of, and the accusative to the side of, and the genitive from the side of. Here with verbs, it means to be beside, for example, with the verb gignomai. Um, para didome, with didome, it means to hand something over mm -hmm. to another another person. So it, it's the same as the as the Latin verb trado, okay? So the word for, for tradition in Greek is paradosis, what's handed on from one person mm -hmm. to another. Um, and then there's parameno, which means to stand fast or stay behind, but also beside somebody, stay, remain at the side of someone, have, be solid, have solidarity with people.
Then there are the principal parts of the verb tonkano, the verb that um, when it means happen to governs a participle. When it has no participle, that the participle that completes its meaning, its supplementary participle. When it has no participle, uh, it can, has an object in the genitive, it means hit upon or, or obtain something. So the principal parts are tonkano tauksomai, the root being t u he, okay? Tau upsilon he gives you tonkano, just like math gives you manthano, and lath gives you lanthano, and lab gives you lambano. These are all the same types of presence formed from an aorist root. So the future has the e grade of the root, tauksomai, and you, you got mm. the, the zero grade again in the perfect tatu kreka, it's an intransitive verb, so there are no passive forms. Um, Lastly, there are two other verbs, thano, the verb to anticipate, to do someone, something before someone else, to be the first in doing something. You know, we're going to have to understand this verb better when we actually see it in sentences, mm -hmm. okay? But you, it can take a direct object, okay? You can anticipate someone in mm -hmm. doing something, right? Right. Okay? Um, so there's thano, thesamai, and ephasa, or ephane. You've got a first and a second aorist. It's one or the other. They don't have different meanings. It's just a newer and an older one. So it's not like histeme, which always has two aorists with different meanings. Um, and lastly, there's chairo, from the same root as the noun charis, which means to rejoice in, to take pleasure in doing something. Um, why would well, anyway, chairo, chairezo is the future. There's no aorist, and there's a second aorist, echarein, which means to be to, to it functions as a as a as a as the aorist of the verb. It means to I rejoiced in, mm. and the perfect is I have rejoiced in kechareka. So there's no active aorist of it anymore in Greek. All right, um, when it comes to nouns and adjectives, um, there's heteros, hetera. Heteron, a really interesting word, that means one or the other of two. It's comp co composed of the of the old root he, which is, gives you English he. It's a third person pronoun, and teros. So teros is the comparative thing. So mm -hmm. it's just like the words for right and left in Greek have the teros suffix. It means one he, and as opposed to the other. Mm -hmm. So it means one or the other of two. You can have have it be either one. But the zero grade of this is, gives you hetairos, the word for f companion or comrade or political associate that we had in the previous lesson. Um, and the relationship is that, that uh, um, it's like we, the, our expression of significant other, right, mm -hmm. is your friend, okay? All right, um, there's, there's the adverb eti, which means yet or still and gives you uketi uh, and meketi, no longer. Um, there's the adjective koinos, koine, koinon, um, a very common word in Greek that means common, sorry mm -hmm. for the bad joke, um, <laughs> but the book also leaves out an important other meaning of it, which is standard. So, so for example, that's why the dialect in which uh, the New Testament is composed is called koine. It's hey koine, the standard dialect, which um, spread all over the Alexandrian Hellenistic world. Right. Okay, um, we don't have that until after Alexander, when the Greek world becomes amalgamated in some way, and you start teaching Greek to people who didn't know it before. Mm. Um, let's see. We've got mathetes, which is a agent noun from the verb manthano, means a person who learns, a student or a pupil. Uh, we got the adjective mesos, mese, meson, which means middle. Uh, lots of interesting connotations of middleness in Greek daily life, because what's in the middle is something that's shared, okay? That's koinos, <laughs> in fact. Mm. And so you can talk about things being in the mess middle as being common, okay? Um, and it goes for a middle space, uh, like the Boston Common. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. can call that the meson in Greek city states. Um, and it could be the middle space in a house, which is the hearth, oh, basically. But uh, so we have notions. There's the poetics to space in ancient cultures, in Greece mm -hmm. as well. Um, there's the adjective radios, radia radion, which means easy. I don't know of any um, any cognates of that in English. Notice that it has an iota subscript under the alpha, radios. Okay, so. That's, that's the only thing that's peculiar about it. There's the noun stasis. This is the root noun.
from the adject from the verb histeme. It means it should mean standing or standing still. Okay, mm -hmm. but what it means is um, civil war. Okay, in Greek city states. So it's complicated to explain, but uh, and maybe maybe in class we can talk about this. Okay, I don't want to take too much time. And then there's um, the prefix uh, uh, when you use the the pre preposition hupa as a preverb. It's really a way, bad way of saying it. It's the inherited functions of hupa as a preverb as opposed to its functions as a preposition. So it, they tell you it means under to do something under something to do it secretly to do it gradually or in a little way, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a, um, to, to mean, there's a funny expression, hupati in Greek, that means a teeny little bit <laughs> <laughs> and under something, okay? So, so we have that uh, kind of minimizing sense of under. Uh, um, an underachiever is small, okay? Slightly, mm -hmm. uh, that's the other aspect of it. So they gave us two verbs with hupa as a preverb, hupakuo, which means to listen to somebody in a careful or intense way, to pay attention to them. And hopameno means to wait for something. There isn't anything particularly hopa about either of those verbs. Um, again, some, in some cases, it's verbs with compounds, with three verbs that function in prose, mm -hmm. as opposed to the simple verbs, which Greeks tend to think of as poetic. Okay, so yeah. you're going to see hopameno when you expect to see meno. Mm. That's it.